Praise God. I pass the time to call in and open up for questions and answer. Thank you, Pastor, for this really uh, great message again. So uh, now, uh, if you have questions, you can post it in the chat. Uh, you can also unmute yourself to ask the question directly. Well, while waiting for them, uh, you can uh, make your contributions, call in, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, Pastor, um, wow, it's, um, we are receiving the seed form, uh, uh, means the DNA of uh, Jesus uh, into our spirit, our soul, and also our bodies. So, the... Um, the word is involved in each part of it, uh, as well as the Holy Spirit, because also we saw that how um, the washing of the body by the word uh, yeah. is... And there's the word Rema too. Yeah, and also uh, uh, he, uh, he puts his word into our heart and into our mind. So this... Uh, yeah, it's actually like a bit like the stem cell, right? I mean, uh, yes. the, the stem cell or the DNA of the Lord. Um, uh, First John says the seed of God is in us. Yeah, the sperma of God, right? Which is yes. DNA, actually. Mm. Um, in terms of the body, right? Uh, what we, we all have this uh, always uh, understanding of... Um, Receiving from the Lord this blessing uh, when we gather together and have Holy Communion. Um, mm. okay. How do we kind of like uh, receive a, a, another level of understanding so that as we take Holy Communion, we are also receiving this uh, renewal also or regeneration of our body. Mm, good question. Um, it is like, you know, the blood of Jesus is like an organic thing that has flown into the Holy of Holies, but it has flown into us. When we receive His new covenant, a part of his blood transfers his life into our spirit, soul, and body. So we are linked to him in a pictorial sense. So uh, when we have Holy Communion by faith, we are also receiving uh, the, the, the blessing and impartation to our body uh, to uh, receive health and renewal of youth. All right. And, and the Lord showed me that it's not so much like, uh, although we can illustrate it as the father is a husband, man, and Jesus is a vine, and we receive his life. But another way in which we receive it is by being one in his um, atonement, resurrection, and in the entrance into New Jerusalem as a Lamb of God. Amen. Becoming one is the key. Like just now, as I was preaching, there was a sense of... Uh, 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 a sense of uh, touched by what Jesus did for us on 
Gethsemane and the cross. That becoming one with all he has done for us in his cross and his resurrection and in his entrance into new Jerusalem as a Lamb of God is how we draw it into ourselves. Mm. There's a question coming. I answer that first. Thank you, sir, for today's message. I have a question, sir. If Adam was a supernatural man and a Lord Jesus, a heavenly man, what will we become in the next 40 years? Are we in the process of becoming spiritual men or have we lost our chance of being supernatural because of sin nature? Then only have a chance to become heavenly men because of we because of we have received the Lord Jesus in our hearts. Oh no, we will become exactly like Jesus. Everything that Jesus sees, including the Lamb of God in New Jerusalem, is what we are. We, in a sense, become better than Adam. And there is a sense of that. In the book of 2 Corinthians 3.18, the word metamorpho is also used. But the word metamorpho is used with the word autos, uh, which is different for Jesus in Luke chapter 9. Uh, Jesus was heteros, he's altered because there was a different type and layer of glory added to him. But for us in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, as we beheld him, it says we are metamorpho autos. That means we become exactly like him. And that's our blessing and privilege. So, Pastor, for more people, uh thinking about the questions. Uh, let's uh, continue. Uh, there is also like, um, as you were teaching, um, this word regeneration came to my mind. Uh, then mm -hmm. as, I, as, I look at, as I look at it, it's also something that we don't quite understand, uh, we don't quite have the full understanding yet. Um, so Pastor, maybe you can help us a bit. Uh, I think the first occurrence is on it's in Matthew 19, verse 28. Mm. Matthew 19, verse 28. Yeah, it's the first occurrence. There's only two occurrences of this word. In the regeneration, when a son of man seeks, oh, okay, uh, on the twelve throne, judging the tribes of Israel. And um, yes, the word regeneration actually uses a second time in Titus 3 5, uh, not by works of righteousness. Uh, it saved the washing of regeneration. Let's look at the Greek word. And um, palik genesia. It's a rebirth. And um, the word palik, which is from the word palin, uh, is, a, is a way of uh, reputation. Um, and the, word, the other word is called the normal word for genesis. So it's palik genesis. And... Um, uh, should I say to you that in a regeneration, that's like uh, 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 like everything reborn again. And interestingly, uh, in Titus, it says here, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, 
but according to his mercy, save us through the washing, let's say the word washing, Lutron, yes, washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us upon the name of Jesus Christ. So indeed, the word regeneration is like a new genesis. And we could translate it as that. That in the uh, new genesis or regenesis that God uh, brings about, uh, he, uh, that particular part is talking about in uh, uh, the millennium. Hmm. And a new genesis is a good word, right? It's like the yes. the second Adam uh, redo uh, what Adam has uh, in a way failed, uh, but through our Lord Jesus Christ, the new genesis uh, is formed, and uh, also through Him, uh, He will form the new heaven and new earth. Yes. Mm, wow. And when we see here that the washing washing means there is a word involved, right? And then yes. of course, and the Titus one is about this generation. Mm, so the washing of the, and it takes out regeneration and renewing uh, of the Holy Spirit. So it's like, just now you were teaching and you're saying that the Holy Spirit is involved, the Word is involved, and then there is a, a part that is in the mind, there's a part in the in the heart and a part of the uh, the body. So it seems that this probably has covered, you know, the, the, the different parts, but do we say that regeneration or this regenesis is composing of all the parts, I guess, right? Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. It seems that Paul was also looking forward to a regenesis, uh, which he called part of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And somehow he, he uses like, I mean, like different word use regeneration and then renewing. So definitely, there is supposed to be something that he wants to convey uh, to us, right? Yes. And when, like last Friday, when the Lord showed me that. Uh, Jesus regarded his transfiguration and spoke about him he as uh, Exodus. And I say, wow, what a word. He could have, um, uh, it's like he really prophetically typed that. that uh, I don't know why, but it's like Jesus made this last blessing generation as a Exodus out without seeing death. Hmm. It's also, I guess, to give us a very visual, uh, uh, let's say, vision. I mean, uh, to see it like uh, the the children of Israel exodus out of uh, of Egypt, yes. and then you know they uh, they were in a place where. Uh, they wouldn't. They don't grow old. I mean, things don't grow old, and yes. they, they had the, the the power of God sustaining them. Yes. In this last generation, we can see things like this happening. Mm -hmm. So it's also brought to me. I mean, I uh, will just wait for more people to ask questions. But, uh, to this uh, Hebrews, uh, chapter ten. And um, let me see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, Hebrews chapter ten have quite a number of things. Of course, we we uh, it was talked about. Um, he has perfect perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Then he, uh, Paul was talking about how the word is put into our heart and into our minds. So you know we receive that seed, you know, so that we, um, can uh indeed be perfected. Um as the Lord um, uh, wills. And then later on, he talks about uh, how um, there is a new and living way consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, you know. So talking about the flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we draw near to God with a true heart in full assurance of faith, 
heart sprinkled with uh, sprinkled from an evil conscience and body washed with pure water. So again, I think as Pastor you have taught, right? This this uh, it brings clarity uh, to all these verses that um the Lord is doing something uh in because the first he said true heart uh in a assur- full assurance of faith it uh we know faith is in the spirit so there's something yeah. you know deposited into our spirit our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience the mind you know the soul area um that's and- our heart and the uh the perfecting work in all three parts mm. of uh of of us um and then i find interesting also the next portion where it says that uh, let's hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering for he is faithful and just now in titus you also talk about hope of eternal life so it looks like uh, the hope uh, is very important to help us to continue to press on uh, in in this faith walk. And uh, in verse 24, it says, let us consider one another to stop love and good works. Uh, but 25 is what I saw different. It says that not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some but exhorting one another so much more as you see the day approaching. So it's like, you know, this is written for the end time because mm. as the day is approaching, this is like, you know, we are already approaching, you know, the uh, the day of the Lord. So uh, it seems to indicate that these are things that help us in the three parts uh, renewal also. That, um, uh Pastor, do we see it as that as the church assemble together, especially of course we when we assemble together, we also take Holy Communion, right? I mean, but also as we assemble together, it says that you know, if anyone is sick, you know, the elders pray for them, they are healed. Uh, does it mean that when the church assemble together, there is something uh the Lord deposits into the human body to renew? the youth i believe so i believe that there's both individual when we are in the presence of god like aaron's rod and also when we are together uh, as a whole body and god is doing that Mm. i also want to point to something here and that's the word that is found in the book of um, um, Hebrews 11, verse 1. And that's the word hypostasis, which is um, um, uh, interesting. Or upon or, or by or under. And then the other word stasis uh, from the word uh, histamy, uh, it means that something that makes it stand. Together, the word means a substance, a substance. And um, and that word substance. Uh, is also referred to Jesus in Hebrews 1 verse 3. That says in Hebrews 1 verse 3, Jesus being the brightness of his glory and the express image or uh, the very uh, image is a substance Hebrews 3 verse 14 we have become partakers of Christ 
And the word partakers means that become a part of him. If we hold the beginning of our substance steadfast to the end, it is just like uh, long ago when we have a computer program uh, or internet is very slow, when you click it, it slowly comes in and the picture slowly forms. And, um, uh, and sometimes, uh, like even today, when you print 3D printing or uh, even a normal printing, it takes time to see the shape form. But especially in 3D printing, they actually create a whole thing. And um, so when it starts, you must pull it until it ends. Just like when Elijah, when he prayed seven times, he never let go until the cloud began to form. Just one tiny little cloud like the size of a man's hand. Then when he saw it, he said, he knew, that's it. And you know, from the invisible to the visible, it comes nearer and nearer and nearer, like a pregnancy. And uh, even Paul says in Galatians 4.19 that he labored again for them. And so the spiritual comes closer and closer and closer to being birthed. And even, I would say, even uh, 30 years before Jesus uh, uh, even uh, the very year when Jesus is about to be born, there are those who are sensing the time is coming. Like there's a nearness, just like we know this, this end time completing. That, and then inside each one of our life, there is such a thing like there is a nearness of thing being fulfilled. And of course, Joseph sensed it two years before he actually uh, was to be brought before Pharaoh. He felt that. You know, everything is coming to a close. And from the invisible to the visible, when there is that sense, there's that nearness, when the substance of faith already, Hebrews 11 verse 1, that is about to be birthed, it seems that we must hold on. There's a process of holding on. That ties to Philippians 2, that we must hold on. That you know how sometimes that there is one breath. It's just like if a woman is about to give birth, we cannot say, hey, okay, la, go home, I'll take your time, you know, take your time. No, because once there is a process of birth coming, uh, the woman must be ready to give birth. And once the birth starts, uh, we should not postpone it. We should not uh, to say, okay, you know, let's... Uh, Let's wait another one week or let's wait next year. No, the, the birth is coming. And there is like suddenly, it's like one breath. We must not let go. We must hold on. We must press on. We must uh, uh, use everything within us to lay hold of, to, 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 to hold on to it till it gives birth. And so that's Hebrews 3. I thought that would be interesting. Uh, in the line of what you're saying about uh, what God is bringing forth, God, God is uh, uh, hypostasis into our reality. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Well, there are a few yeah. other questions here. Yes? You was, while you were saying and having that conversation with other colleagues, I was just having this conversation with Gmail last two weeks. Like, because you were sharing this the recent crossover you had the download of seeing uh, a baby right and then now you, you you're sharing and encouraging us about holding on this hypostasis word it also reminds me the difference uh, back in 2020 when we're crossing over to 2021 remember when you had that very gruesome vision of a spiritual abortion like the uh, premature do you remember that download and in comparison to the wonderful opposite 
download uh, that you receive during this crossover. It's about those people who, who are supposed to be like birthing something in the spiritual realm, but because they didn't hold on and it was a gruesome, something like a premature abortion. But this time when you shared about when you saw the birthing of the baby and we were contemplating like, wow, it's just so awesome just holding on to that one breath. And then now you're talking about this hypostasis of holding on until the 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 birthing of uh, what God has placed. So I I just want to bring that out, just like to because it's like something that had happened and we can learn from it about holding on and not and pushing through. Yeah, that's all. Thank you, Pastor. Thanks a lot. There are these two questions. Sir, we have 40 years left before the end of this age. In your opinion, is it possible for us to completely receive everything that God has prepared for us? The answer, yes. And also, will there be an acceleration in our personal lives? I believe, as to the second question, the answer is also yes. There is an acceleration. In fact, during our meetings now and also in our five hours of worship and prayer, you all will find that the Friday are now different. There is something else that is flowing as we partake together. Uh, next question. <clears throat> Hello, Pastor. When unwell, what should be our arteries, be cognizant that we have the life flowing blood of Yeshua. Uh, when unwell, partake of the Rhema and the Word and Logos of God. Speak it forth over and over again, visualize it, and the Word will be like Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It will be life to you, to your uh, spirit, your soul, and to your flesh and marrow and bones. <clears throat> Next question. Thank you, Pastor, for the revelation of a new heart, spirit, and body. When you were speaking, I thought of Jonah who went against the will of God. It was like he traded himself to the world he chose his free will, but after being sown by the fish and his repentance, he manifested the will of God. I also think what Jesus told is like Israelites that since they want to see signs from him, they will only experience what Jonah um, went through. My question is, how did Jonah preach once and everyone repent? I think there was something extraordinary. Yes, um, I believe there was also some sort of mark left upon him having been through the gut of the fish and coming out. And um, also, I believe that many people heard about how this man came out from the belly of the fish to send a message to them. And thirdly, when he spoke what the Lord gave to him, there was a conviction that came from God. You know how sometimes that the Holy Spirit gave a strong sense of conviction, like God gave to Charlie Finney. Uh, he called it the power for one high that caused people to be convicted by the word of God. Same like in the book of Acts chapter 2 when 3,000 people had their heart cut. Uh, and that was what happened in um, uh, Nineveh when Jonah spoke the word. And that is why the message was so effective. Uh, even though Jonah himself would rather see them be judged and dead, uh, but God show forth that He's a God of compassion.
Well, praise the Lord. Uh, any other questions? And um, otherwise, uh, we we'll like call it at any other uh, uh, good points uh, before we close. So it looks like there's no other uh, questions. I think we, we have discussed a lot already. Um, I think we just need to internalize uh, all this um, and so that uh, we can indeed uh, move on. Like Paul says, you know, uh, uh, in Hebrews, move on to perfection. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give thanks. Uh, let's just worship for some time. Alle mening braha serial mamangama O ramahanging imashtalama serial mamamaburidi ararama Avli ening amliya mashtulamahange Kumurahanging angoshtelia nuluma mari gambus the maligiba the valabasta. Father, we acknowledge your word. <clears throat> your word, Father, is life to us. Men shall not live by your, by bread alone, but by every single word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In all of the heavens and the earth, in all of this life, your word is more precious than gold. So we thank you for your word. We thank you for your words that you speak to our heart and to our lives. Your word that will last even longer than heaven and earth. We thank you for all your rhema and all your logos, all your dreams and visions. Every word that we have today that we have recorded. And Father, we tremble at your word because the reality that is in front of us, the reality that will replace this physical reality of this planet is greater than what we can say and greater than what we can imagine. We welcome every word that he has spoken about this end time and about what we will become. We look forward to what your promises are. Let it be unto us according to your word. And in these 40 years, mankind will see that God's word is alive. And your word will be witnessed to by the Holy Spirit. That the whole world and every life on earth will understand that your word is absolute. And that Everything that is around us on this planet is subject to change. Only your word remains. So establish the unshakable, immutable word and kingdom of God in these last days. Let your kingdom be established in these days of the Tantos. And let all authority and power and might and riches and honor and glory come under the blood and power and the name of Jesus Christ. 
and cause us all to be bonded to you as bond servants, where we live by your word. And thank you, Father God, for all your grace and strength and sustenance upon each one of us. We have been through everything that you tested us in. And here we are, still in love with you, still believing your word, and still eagerly waiting to be a part and purpose and plan of your word. We worship you and let all your kingdom be established or the 10,000 churches be established. Let all the 24 hour praise and worship all over the world be established and let your glorious church be ready for the rapture and cause each one of us to grow to be six billion strong. Fill with your blessings of glory and honor and thank you, Father. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.